Maryland International Raceway for Import First Domestic World Cup Finals. This is one of the biggest events we cover all year. There's 348 registered racers on the property. We're packed. We're, to the, we're packed to the gills and everything runs at least like a nine. Like there's a lot of fast cars here, including not the fastest, but the quickest. Now that means ET, not mile per hour. The quickest stick shift car on the planet is on the property. And that is Tick Performance. We're going to talk to them real quick. They changed the setup since last time we saw it. They just broke the record for quickest ET in the quarter mile for a stick shift car at FL2K. Just like last month. So we're going to stop and talk to them. See what they're here to do. How are we doing, Mr. Record Holder? Doing good. How about you? Not bad. Not bad. So we've seen this. We've seen the car. At, this is Grub Worm. We've seen this car in the past, but it's a completely new setup since last time we saw it. Yeah, it's uh, normally been a Gen 2 small block Chevy LT1. You know, I originally in, would have came in the '97 Camaro, but we swapped it up to a Gen 1 small block Chevy. So it's aftermarket block now. Gotcha. Bow tie Chevy race block. Still mostly the same as far as the engine combo goes. It's just the aftermarket block. No aftermarket blocks for the LT1 style. The older style, the 90s style. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, the, the, basically the LT1 and the 350 small box Chevy are the same thing. There's just some differences with the cooling system. Oh, and really? We don't run a cooling system, That's so fair. that makes that irrelevant. Yeah. It's a 348 cubic inch now. You're, you did a six. Hang on. We're gonna jump ahead. You did a 661 uh, FL2K with how many cubes? A 348. Jeez. Okay. All right. What, what's the game plan? In Maryland this year. What are we doing? Uh, it's pretty much the same as any race. You know, we go out there and try to just be conservative through qualifying and, you know, just inch up a little by little and, and, and see what we can go. You know, it kind of depends on what Grannis and some of the other guys end up qualifying at. You know, we want to be number one qualifier, obviously, but right. uh, we got to save it for the race. You know, so. <laughs> you guys, you guys have the 661, and that is, I already told the people at home, that's the quickest, but not the fastest. Right, the yeah. passes you've been is a 216? Yeah, we went 216 on the 661 pass, and then actually Grannis beat us in the final, and he went 221, so he holds a mile per hour record. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's just five mile an hour off. <laughs> it's just, I know it's yeah. a big five, but it's I, just five. I, I think we would have probably went about 221 as well, but we missed fourth gear, so. Oh, we? I like, it's a, te we, it's a it's, team it's thing. It's a team effort. <laughs> <laughs> Grub worm racing. <laughs> What, what's the turbo setup on it? It's a 106 precision. Single 106 on it? Yeah. And how much boost are you running? Uh, well, on the 661 pass, I think we made like 53 pounds. How much power is the grub we're making now? We don't know, but I mean, if you do the calculators, uh, 216 mile an hour, the car's like 2,800 pounds. Okay. So it's roughly around 2,000. All right. Well, we love seeing the grub work. We love seeing you guys. Uh, good luck this weekend. Yeah, thank I'm you. I'm sure you'll do well in qualifying, and we'll see you Sunday, buddy. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Thank you. Pretty average, pretty like just kind of run of the mill pass for them. Now they're doing sixes all the time, 661. That was just like a A to B pass, just trying to qualify. <laughs> Shot, 
what are you doing this time? Give me ET. Uh, all right. Six seventy-seven. Okay. All right. <laughs> Taking it conservative. I like it. I like it. Good luck to you. Rubberman is still number one. Six eighty. He is struggling, just like the rest of the class, to be consistent. But we might see quicker pass right now. He's been as quick as six sixty-one. Let's see if he can go quicker. Make sure it's not leaking. I think it's good. All right, I'll take all these eggs. No, 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 no. What? It still runs. I just thought it might have blowed the motor or something. If you don't see all far enough, I'll, I'll drive it. If I hold my horn, then stop. Okay. What's it been doing? We're all aboard the struggle bus right now. You know, we make one good pass and then everything falls apart. Yeah. I don't know. It's uh. Somehow it's driving through the beam. Like we we use a line lock to you know hold the car in place during staging, and it worked. The line lock we know works because we can test it here and it'll work. And it works when I pre-stage because we apply it in pre-stage and then we kind of drive through it to stage. But it's like when I floor the car, either the clutch is dragging so much that it overcomes the pressure I put on it, or the line lock's letting go. Quite a bit. Yeah. yeah it's one or the other. So I, I, I can feel it doing it, so I let off the throttle, and I'm able to stop it from happening. And so I don't, you know, go through the beam and waste my pass. Yeah. And I kind of just heel toe uh, gas and brake with one foot and make the pass work. <laughs> That's not what you want to be doing in eliminations. No, I mean, we can't do stuff like uh, that because we can't get a reaction time the way it is. This is probably the messiest stick shift class I've seen at I World Cup. Everyone's struggling. Yeah, it's wild. Have a real good pass and then nothing. Yeah, well, you know, Granis and us come out of Florida, you know, setting our, you know, personal bests and records and we come up here. Yeah, FL2K was nuts. What happened? Yeah, I don't know. And we had a backfire on that pass on the two to three shift. So it's like it had a boost spike. It was an artificial boost spike because it was just a, a pressure spike inside the manifold, so it drowns Shut itself it down. in fuel. Yeah. This just gets so much fuel because it thinks it made like 75 pounds of boost. And, you know, I, I thought it may have hurt something, so I pulled over and you know had the safety guys look and make sure it wasn't dumping all. But once I stopped, you know the, the engine's still idling. Yeah, I was pretty. I mean, I felt like it was still good, but you know we can't win races if the car quits pulling going down track either. So. Uh, we'll figure some stuff out. Well, at least you're qualified really nicely. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one consolation right now. You hopefully, you get everything lined up for tomorrow for eliminations. Yeah, we'll go back to our old times maybe and just rule that out. Yeah. Yep. Try to make it through. <laughs> just shut off the safety. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck, man. All we'll right. see you tomorrow for eliminations. Thank you. look easy with a stick car now. Like you can mess up and you still run a six. I don't get it. It's not been easy this <laughs> minute. <laughs> Alright, so Kyle told me you had a clutch issue yesterday. Yeah, it's not so much a clutch issue, but just as as, as the way the clutch is working and we're kind of having to get used to it and adapt some other things. Just because it's a new clutch or basically the clutch is engaging at the very top of its travel, gotcha. whereas the other one was further in, you know, like more in the middle of the gotcha. travel of the pedal. Yep. So we was, to get the car to stage, we was letting the clutch pedal up so far it was turning our line lock off, because that's how it turns off, gotcha. when the clutch comes up. Gotcha. So then we would, the car would kind of jump into the beams deep, 
and it would roll, you know, when I got on the two-step, it was going to roll through the beams. I never rolled through the beams, but I, it was rolling, and I you know, got off the brake or the gas and grabbed the brake and set it again. But we got that figured out. Uh, we also had a backfire issue, and I think we figured out that out to be that the wide band was loose. Oh. So it's getting like a, a weird reading. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that last pass, it actually lost its wideband reading, and it just completely. Yeah, it, say, it literally says on the data log, unplugged. <laughs> I'm sort of worried about the engine because if the wideband goes away, then you have no adaptive right. fuel. Right. So how, whatever the tune says is what it's got. If it's too lean, it's too lean. If it's too rich, it's too rich. Our correction's been pretty good, but we turned the boost up a little bit more that pass gotcha. where we haven't been this weekend. So. Hopefully the engine's good. Are you yeah. gonna make any big changes between now and the next one or just kind of maintenance and no same tune. It spun on second gear, like the one to two shift. Mm -hmm. It spun bad, like it just blew right through second gear. So we'll probably try to actually back it down a little bit. Who do you got next round? Nick. I think it's Nick. Nick Coleman. Oh, in the truck? Yeah. It's okay. gonna be either him or Tomsky, and I think Nick won. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did, yeah, yeah. Alright man. Good luck. Thanks. Rob Warren back up for the semi-final round against Nick Coleman in the S10. The car's been deep sevens. He's hoping to run a six here. It'd be great timing against Rob Warren. Big badass race. A turn of events here with Grubworm dying on the line, but it was one hell of a weekend here for them, running of several sixes. That car is one serious six shift car. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching.